<clears throat> good afternoon, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm just going to go ahead and start because I know that people will go back and um, check out the replay. So um, I don't normally come on. Hello, KP Mustang. Welcome. I don't normally come on on a Thursday in the afternoon. Um, I generally have my sessions Monday, Wednesday, Friday mornings um, for encouragement. Um, and Tuesday nights, I do a artist Bible study um, specifically for singers, dancers, musicians, writers, actors, you name it, um, just to give us some in encouragement. Um, and tonight I'll be back. We'll be back with our relationship series at 6 p.m. And we'll be dealing with um, a topic that you don't want to miss, whether you are single, <laughs> whether you are engaged, whether you're courting, um, even if you're married. Awesome. Love you all the way from Maryland. Thank you for joining me. Um, tonight, please, please, please invite people because we're going to be talking about um, the woman that every man wants that just might be the death of him. So it's going to be a, uh, it's going to be an intense conversation. Hey, Nakia, thank you for joining. Thank you for joining. So today, this afternoon, I just want to give you um, some encouragement. Um, first, let me start out with encouragement for women and single women in particular. Welcome, Linda Joy. Um I heard a really good conversation today, and it was on um, at Tim D. Clinton's page. And they were talking about why they won't date a godly woman. But it was actually a really good conversation to hear from single men. Um, I think that a lot of what they were bringing up were, were very good points to consider. Um, one of the things that I was like surprisingly... Yeah, one of the things, one of the things that I was surprisingly pleased to hear from men, like because I haven't heard it in so long, is they were actually talking about how they want a real woman. Thank you, Karen. I appreciate you. Um, they were talking about how men want a real woman, like they want a woman that doesn't have a yeah. Um, I'm serious. I haven't heard a whole lot of men talk this way in a long time. So it was very surprising. It was very refreshing. Um, they were talking about how they wanted a woman that didn't have a whole lot of extensions in her hair. They were talking about, um, you know, desiring a woman that had stretch marks. And I was like, whoa, stretch marks? <laughs> um and I say that in a laughing in a laughing way. Yeah, I say that in a laughing way because um, for the first time in my life, I'm 38 years old. For the first time in my life, I have stretch marks, and I'm like, you know, okay, this is this is new for me. Um, nothing wrong with stretch marks, people. Okay, people, you you get them. You lose weight, you gain weight, whatever. But for the first time in my life, I have stretch marks. And, um, you know, so I do the whole cocoa butter, vitamin E thing. Um, I am, yeah, exactly. I am working out. <clears throat> and so my stretch marks tend to go back and forth. You know, they're, sometimes they fade, sometimes they come back, depending on, um, well, see, I don't have kids. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> And I didn't realize like it was such a huge deal for people to have stretch marks. Like I didn't, I didn't know it was a big deal. So I just kind of saw it as a part of life. But to hear the guy saying that they didn't mind if a woman had stretch marks and that they actually questioned uh, the woman's kind of femininity. Like they were like, you know, the whole plumping yourself up. <laughs> The whole plumping yourself up, the whole, you know, smoothing out your flawless skin, going to a surgeon, that kind of stuff. That's what really what they were talking about. And that's what they were um, were um, sharing on is that they wanted some realism and authenticity to the women, 
you know, or the woman that they would pursue because it was a group of, of men that were talking. So I thought that was encouraging um, because, yeah, because we do see so much of the lip plumping, the, um, the butt injection stuff, you know, with African-American women. They weren't older men, no. They were actually um, probably men in their maybe mid-20s, early 30s. And they were having this conversation, which I think was a really good conversation um, that needs to be had because I think their perspective was a lot of this stuff has gotten over, like overdone. It's gotten out of control um, with the way women are um, augmenting themselves. And they even used that word, you know, they were having a debate. They began to talk and have a debate about um, whether or not augmentation was a sin. And um, some of the comments that I put on the on the screen because I was able to get in and converse a little bit is that number one, bodily exercise does profit, okay? So anybody saying, you know, that you don't need to exercise, you don't need to work out, you don't need to get in shape, okay, that's clearly not biblical because the scripture does say that bodily exercise profits a little. So it's not condemning you being in, you know, shape. It's not condemning that, okay? The scripture also says that, you know, Paul said, I desire, beloved, that you, what, prosper and be in good health even as your soul prospers. So yes, while we, while I am one definitely who loves prayer, who loves intercession, who loves worship, who loves consecration, who loves shut-in, um, we do need to take care of our bodies, right? I notice with my own body, I am, uh, I'm 5'9", and um, the largest I had ever been was about 135, 140. Well, now I've got about maybe 30, 35 extra pounds on me, and I have noticed the difference in my energy level, um, in my ability to, to just do normal things. And so I'm working to get my weight back down, right? I'm not, um, you know, if I stand up here, you can see, um, excuse me, you know, I'm not really big, but you can see that I have a little bit of weight in my, um, I have a little bit of weight in my middle. And so the area of my body that I'm working on is, is, getting my getting my middle section the weight down getting my stomach off because i don't want it to get bigger right and i want to get um toned yes so i'm working the exercises that i'm doing have nothing to do with bodybuilding but it has everything to do with toning and it has everything to do with getting the weight off so now you know i'm seeing a physical trainer a personal trainer who is helping me do the exercises um, that I need to do in order to tone my core, in order to get the stomach weight off, right? Yes, I do Pilates, but I also do, um, I go once a week to the gym now with a personal trainer, and she does weights with me, weight lifting, basically all the things that I can't do from home. So at home, I do the jump rope, I have a stability ball, um, thank you, um, I have a stability ball at home. I have weights that I do and the Pilates. So I'm doing that throughout the week, three times a week, sometimes four times a week. And then on the weekend, I take a Saturday and I do um, work with a personal trainer. So she shows me the things in the gym that I can do that obviously I don't have the equipment to do at home. So for women, it is important for us to take care of our bodies. It is important for us to stay in shape. If you're in ministry, you know, I'm a praise and worship leader as well as a pastor. I cannot afford to be getting out of breath while I'm leading praise and worship. Like some things are just simple common sense things that we need to concern ourselves with, you know, and you know, I don't want to be singing a song and I'm like, ah. <coughs> you know, that that's not a good look. Okay, it's just not. <laughs> so um, I said all that to say, I think that sometimes we can go so into the spirit that we forget about the very basic natural things that we need to do to take care of our bodies. Now, um, 
and I will say hereditary wise, um, I came from a family that was pretty much like the clumps. If you've ever seen the movie with um, Eddie Murphy, everybody was tall. Everybody's, you know, really, really, really big. And some of my relatives um, have gone the gastric bypass route, you know, and they've chosen to do that. Well, looking at my family history, I chose to go the diet route. So I know that I'm picking up some weight as I get older that wasn't there before, but my diet has really been steady. It's been a Mediterranean diet. I eat lots of fruit. I eat lots of vegetables. I don't eat fried food. Um, I like to eat fish. I like to eat, um, if you're talking about just meat, I like to eat ground turkey, um, more than ground beef or even chicken. So my diet is really um, stable and my diet is very consistent. You know, I may go and, um, you know, if I'm doing a special occasion or something like that, I may have, you know, ribs if I go out to eat. But other than that, I'm not really a big pork eater. I don't eat a whole lot of beef. Um, and so because my diet has been as consistent as it's been, I have now really have to step up in the physical exercise piece because I am getting older. And so the weight is, is not staying off like it used to. And so, yes. And so uh, I eat lots of fruit, lots of vegetables, lots of nuts, um, lots of greens, uh, lots of spinach. Um, I'm a, I like seafood. I don't do like uh, shrimp or crab or anything like that. I like fish, like tilapia, and um, I also like salmon. So my diet is really, really consistent. Um, and as I said, because I'm getting older and I'm noticing that the weight is not coming off like it, you know, my metabolism is slowing down. So that means I've got to step up my physical exercise. And I do drink lots of water. Going back to what those gentlemen were saying about, um, about what they see happening with women. I think it is very important for more men to speak out about um, appreciating the natural beauty of women. Like I don't wear, the only thing I have on right now is um, eyebrow pencil and that's because <laughs> I don't have any eyebrows, literally. Um, so I draw them in, but I don't wear makeup. The last time I wore makeup was for a photo shoot, and the only thing I wore was my eyebrow pencil and a little bit of eyeshadow. Um, my my uh, face regimen is very simple. Um, I use, thank you, I use hydrogen peroxide, and I use witch hazel. That's it. That's it. Um, I start off, I start off with just a warm water cleanse to open up my pores then I use uh, hydrogen peroxide and then I use witch hazel and then I use cold water to close my pores back up so um, that's something I learned from my grandmother um, she's full-blooded Cherokee she was a nurse um, she taught us a lot of things about kind of like natural stuff um, so that we wouldn't be using a whole lot of chemicals, but it took me a long time to actually follow her advice. So I went through a stage where I was using, um, Avon cleansers. Then I went through a stage where I was using Mary Kay cleansers. Um, if those things work for you, that's great, but I have really, really sensitive skin. So when I started going back to what my grandmother told me, which was the hydrogen peroxide and the, uh, the witch hazel, and cold water and warm water, I started to see my skin clear up. I started to see the pimples go away. Um, uh, deep marks and bruises that I had, you know, from pimples and things like that, those things started to go away. So I, I have just found out, yes, hydrogen peroxide, basic hydrogen peroxide and witch hazel. Those are the only two topical cleansers that I use on my face with um, warm, warm to hot water. I kind of like hot water, but I know it dries out the skin a little bit depending on your, um, your, your skin zones. Um, and then cold water. So once I went back to what, you know, my, awesome. Once I went back to what I was being told as a youth, I figured out that it works. And so 
one of the things that I thought was really good to hear men talking about and men mentioning was the fact that they like natural women. They don't like women who, as, as the one guy said, you know, is, is, is some of this grounds for divorce. Because if I marry you based on <laughs> your makeup palette and you take off your makeup and you, you have a whole different face underneath, you know, that's, that's crazy. And the comment that I put down was that it's a form of deception, right? Because makeup done correctly is supposed to enhance your beauty. It's supposed to enhance what you already have. It's really not supposed to give you a whole nother face unless you're trying out for a movie part, you know, and they're, you know, creating a whole look for you. Um, makeup really is supposed to enhance what you already have. And so um, they were really serious about it. And, you know, they were very, very blunt to say, um, we are looking for women who look like themselves, you know, who are confident in themselves who are confident in who they who they are and so i thought that was very very good again with the health it is important for us to take care of our health it is important for us to get in shape it is important for us to exercise you know we can't um be imbalanced in our life we have to uh, make sure that we are practicing what we preach not just in the spirit realm but also in the natural and um I was having a conversation about this the other day um, because if you look out over the spectrum of Christendom, right, you've got people that are preaching, you have people um, that are singing, that are before the people of God. And the question was brought to me. They were like, you know, well, we sit people down for things like fornication. We sit people down for homosexuality. Um, we sit people down for uh, mismanagement of church funds, right? These, you know, things that kind of like people can see or, you know, it can be evident. But the question came up, why don't we sit people down for gluttony? I was like, mm, wow. You know, because that's evident too. Um, you know, lack of self-control in your eating habits. And, you know, the person was like, well, gluttony is a sin, but I don't see anybody getting sat down for it. I don't see anybody being called to repentance for it. Um, and so <clears throat> I thought that was a good, a good observation, but I do believe that there is some truth in that. See, I mean, I do believe that there is some truth in that in terms of Okay, take care. Take care. Um, share with your followers so this can uh, be in their in their playback of the replay. And so I, I do believe that there is some truth to what the person was getting at in the fact that we have to hold ourselves accountable, not just in what people consider to be the big sins, right? We have to hold ourselves accountable in self-control. We have to hold ourselves accountable in our eating habits. We have to hold ourselves accountable if we're being slowful because gluttony and slowfulness are also sins, right? So we can't just bash people. We can't just beat people over the head over um, uh, of the sins that we judge to be the more prominent, right? Or the more, or the more troublesome. But we really do um, have to take into account every part of our life, every facet of our life, not just um, sexual sin, not just uh, relational sin, but also those things that we're doing against our own bodies, right? That are, that are affecting us in adverse ways and that are kind of leaving a mark on the body of Christ to, for people to kind of think that some of this is okay when it's not okay. Um, someone else posted recently about how concerned they were about some of the gospel artists and how much weight they've gained. And that is a huge concern because, you know, if we love them as gospel artists and if we love them as the souls of God that they are, we also should want their, them to be around long enough to enjoy their life, right? We don't want their life to be cut short 
because of poor personal choices, right? Poor health choices. Nobody should want that. So um, I kind of saw that as as a very as a very good question. So that's all I wanted to talk about this afternoon. We are going to be back <clears throat> at 6 p.m. And like I, like I said, we'll be talking about <clears throat> this evening at 6 p.m. We'll be talking about the woman that every man wants that just might be the death of him. The woman that every man wants that just might be the death of him. So um, it's going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting talk. And I uh, hope that you will join us. Yes, we're heading into the love weekend. But uh, there's one kind of woman that every man wants that just might be the death of him. So I pray that this uh, blessed you. Like I said, I don't normally come on in the middle of the day. Um, but... Uh, I was just encouraged and blessed by what I heard today with the gentlemen. So I want to share that. If you're just coming in, please catch the replay and uh, hear what hear what these gentlemen had to say. Um, I, like I said, I don't know uh, the guy very, very well, but his name is Tim D. Clinton. I don't know him personally, but he was having kind of a round table with some gentlemen about um, what they see going on with women and uh, godly women. And uh, they were just talking about who they, who they wouldn't date. <laughs> and uh, those topics came up and I thought it was really good um, to just kind of share, you know, what I was sharing with them and, and just kind of uh, follow up on some of the things that they were saying. So um, pray that you will have a great day. Hopefully we'll see you back at 6 p.m. Take care. Enjoy your day and God bless.